Welcome to this week's episode and happy new year. If you're listening to this in the real time, we're just starting out in January. I can't believe it. And I'm so excited for this year and I hope you are too. So today we're going to talk about part four of our planning for independent business success in 2023. So part four is embracing your obstacles. And I use that word very purposefully, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. But we want to really focus this year on embracing your obstacles. So before I dive into the topic Let's talk about where we've come from so far. So in the last couple of episodes, I've been breaking down this process for you that I call the repeatable goal achieving framework for you as an independent consultant. And um, before we continue, I just have to tell you, I think my sound is a little bit different um, today. I spent a good chunk of our holiday uh, break redoing my office. So we repainted my uh, boy, my three boys, 12, nine, and seven have been helping me. Some are a little more effective than others. Um, Yeah. So we repainted the office and rearranged it, but I haven't put the curtains or my like massive collection of books back up yet. And I think those two things um, give me a little bit of I've uh, insulation from a sound perspective. So anyway, if it sounds a little bit different, that's why I'll have all that stuff back up when I record next week's episode. So it might go back to sounding the way it was before. Anyway, okay, so <laughs> where we were. Um, I hope you had a fun, uh, fun holiday and did some projects that light you up, whether you went on a trip or whether you did some things around your house. I just love... I'm on a tangent right now, but that's fine. I I love, uh, you know, as we think about the goals for this coming year, the one thing that I love is just like resetting every in the, your, your environment and the way you're thinking and so many things about making things feel different than last year. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's part of the reason why I redid my office. I'm just like really um, knowing that this year is a huge up level in terms of the goals that I'm creating and um, some really fun business projects that I'm undertaking and all the clients that I can't wait to help. And so anyway, I wanted to just like completely change my environment that I'm in every day. And um, that's why I took just kind of... uh, uh, impromptu decided to completely redo my office. So anyway, I will tell you just Googling, um, best paint colors. I found the most amazing color. I'll put the, a picture of my office in the show notes. Um, I just found this most amazing color of gray and that saved so much time. I don't know about you, but choosing paint colors can be really tricky. So anyway, okay, let's get back to the topic. Although that is related. Um, So today we're talking about that goal, step four of that goal achieving framework for independent consultants. And we've just recap for you quickly before we dive into today's topic, which is obstacles. Uh, The first step was for you to assess the last 12 months. So where, what worked well for you in the last 12 months and what do you want to adjust? And so you can go back to that episode when you're ready. Um, The second step was to set your big goals and get really clear about what those goals are and why you want them. And, um, you know, really using the sky as the limit, not trying to be practical or realistic. And then the third step that we worked on last week was breaking down your goals into an action plan. And I shared with you my um, process of creating traceability with your goals. So those are the first three steps of this five-step process. You can go back and listen to those episodes um, when you're ready to, but uh, keep going for today. Let's go through this obstacle process. If you haven't listened to those, all of those three past episodes, no problem, Uh, This is really important just as a standalone topic um, for you to consider as you're working in your business uh, every day in the coming year. Okay, so with that, let's dive into today's topic, which is embracing your business obstacles. 
embracing your business obstacles. That's the fourth step of the five-step process. You can go download the workbook that goes along with this at my website on my website, melissalieberman.com forward slash plan. Just so you've got the exact framework that we're working through um, over these five episodes and you can start putting it into place with that guided workbook. So be sure to go download that and then also schedule a goal review call with me. So um, I'm just offering 2023 goal review. If you're listening to this in the future, you can go check out this website as well. I may be offering this. uh, You can uh, go check it out. And if I'm not, there will be something else for you there. So anyway, for you in the moment, let's spend some time together. 20 minutes, we're going to go over your goals and you can ask me any question that you want um, and get just a, a third party expert perspective on what it is that you want to achieve this year and what obstacles that you expect you might encounter and how you're going to overcome those really digging into, um, the heart of your goals, your plan and the obstacles, um, in the framework that we're going to talk about today. So be sure to go book your uh, 2023 goal review call. It's a free 20 minute call where we can, we'll dive into your specific goals and you can ask me any questions you would like. So that is at, I see the two letters, I see goals, plural dot review. And we'll put the link to that in the show notes as well. Okay, so with that, let's talk about embracing business obstacles. So today's agenda, we're going to talk about why hitting obstacles in your business is healthy. We're going to talk then about the process to plan and address for obstacles as part of your comprehensive 2023 or 12-month business plan. And then we will, uh, I'll give you three examples and then I'll share with you how to put this into action. All right. So that is our agenda for today. Let's start off with things are going to go wrong. Things are going to go wrong. You set your goals, you made a plan, and then it's not going to work. You're going to hit curveballs, you're going to have setbacks. Your hypotheses about how you were going to hit your goals might be wrong or incorrect. This is not a problem. If your plans don't go wrong, you're playing too small. You hitting obstacles means that you've created a a set of goals and a business where you are growing, where you are Uh, pushing yourself and ultimately where you are going to achieve so much more. So the goal here is not to avoid hitting obstacles. The goal here in our work today is anticipating those obstacles and planning ahead for them and getting yourself into a business owner mindset where creating and uncovering and addressing obstacles is the norm. You know, I'll, I'll tell you for me a few years into my business, I've been doing this for 10 and a half years now, a few years into my business when kind of that idea of I'm new wore off, right? So the first several years of my business, I kept thinking I'm new. And so when something would go wrong, I would always point back to, well, I'm just new at this. So I'm figuring it out. But as over time when that I knew, um, I'm new, uh, Uh, excuse, we'll use it as an excuse, wore off. Then I started panicking a little bit. When things didn't go right, I would panic a little bit. Or when things didn't go expect as I expected them to be to go, I would panic a little bit. And you may be in that same situation where this idea of I'm new has worn off. You've been running your business for a while, six months or three years or 20 years, however long it's been. And you start having this panic when things don't go the way you expect them to go. This is so common. You know, for me, I would set goals. And then when I wasn't 100% on track with them, or when me achieving the goals wasn't linear or kind of even, uh, even in the sense of maybe making, you know, X number of dollars every month 
or every quarter, then I was just, uh, I had that panic set in and I would think things like I'm bad at this, or this isn't for me, or this is too much, or I'm, you know, this, I don't know how to figure this out. That's what would happen when the panic would set in, right? We would start, I would start into this self-doubt and questioning cycles. Because I thought, and this I this sounds kind of crazy when I say it to you now, <laughs> but I think so many of us think this. I thought that if things weren't going exactly to my plan, that I that I was doing something wrong. That it meant that I wasn't good at this or that someone else is better at this than I am. But what I learned that changed everything for me, and that's what I want to share with you today, is that obstacles are normal. Obstacles are actually, uh, can be a positive. For me, I, I, you know, by default, I didn't think that hitting obstacles or my, my plan not going exactly according, you know, exactly in a linear fashion was a problem. I thought that me not achieving my goal in this very straight line, linear way was a problem. You might be thinking that too, versus really noticing and understanding that as a business owner, hitting obstacles is normal and, quite frankly, is a, a sign that you're on track. So I want to just normalize the idea of hitting obstacles today for you if you're in that same boat. It's it, another word for it is perfectionism, right? If you're in a perfectionism cycle, like I was, and so many of my independent consulting business owner, owner clients are, then, then we're not able to achieve as much because we think that everything needs to go perfectly. Otherwise, we've done it wrong. So what I want to do is flip that for you today and say, look, the hitting obstacles is normal. And if you're not hitting obstacles, you haven't set your goals big enough. So plan, plan ahead for these obstacles, anticipate the obstacles and set yourself up to have obstacles in your business. That's the shift that we want to make here versus you trying to create a controlled environment where you, where nothing goes wrong, quote unquote, where nothing goes, uh, goes that isn't, nothing happens that isn't according to plan. So that's the first thing that I wanted to share with you today is things are going to go wrong and that is healthy. Things are not going to go completely according to plan and that is healthy for your business and healthy for you. So that's the first thing is knowing that obstacles are going to be part of your business and you want to set up your plan in such a way that you can manage and anticipate and quite frankly, uh, you know, try to trigger those obstacles in order for you to hit that ultimate big goal that you set. All right. So now let's talk about the process to plan for obstacles. There's really two steps here. Three steps, really. The first is uncover all of the obst potential obstacles. So sit down and brainstorm. What are all the, you know what your goal is. You did that in step two couple of epi uh, podcast episodes ago. If not, just sit down right now. Think about what is my what is my goal for this year? And then just start brainstorming all of the potential obstacles that you might hit in all different types of categories. It might be my, uh, knowledge gaps that you have. You're not sure how to sell advisory type uh, work and you want to move into that as an example. You're not sure how to shift out of hourly based pricing into, into pricing that isn't attached to how much time you're working or spending. You might, you might have some knowledge gaps. You might have some mindset gaps. The way you've been thinking about your business is what got your what got you your current or past results and Moving into a new realm, a new phase of your business and new sets of goals is going to require a new mindset. So uncovering what are what is that shift that you need to make and what might the obstacle be in you 
shifting into that new mindset. So uncover all of those potential obstacles, whether they're minds, uh, knowledge gaps or whether they're, you're, you're not sure if your market will accept whatever it is that your target, you know, your target clients will accept whatever it is that you want to offer. You're not sure if you're, you know, how you're going to reach the number that you created. What are the potential obstacles? You might have um, a lot of vacation that you want to take in the coming year and you, and your obstacle is at trying to choose between generating the revenue that you want to generate and having the time off that you want to create. That might be an obstacle at the moment based on your current business model. And I'll give you three very specific examples here in a minute. But brain, the process here to plan for the obstacles is to just take a lot of, you know, take a, a, a piece of paper or your iPad. I love writing on my iPad in the GoodNotes app um, using my Apple Pencil. Anyway, that's a, a little uh, side note here. Saves me so much uh, so much time and um, has everything cons consolidated in one place. I love that. Love that tool. Okay, anyway, the first step was to uncover all of those potential obstacles, just brainstorm all of them out. And then the second is to go back through each of those potential obstacles and define strategies that will help you overcome each one of the obstacles. So what is it that you need to learn, for example, or what is it that you need to test or who do you need to become? What version of you do you need to become in order to make achieve, achieving your goals inevitable? So that's the second step, the process to plan for obstacles. The first step was to uncover all of them brainstorm all of those potential obstacles that you could hit. And the second is to go back and strategize to overcome each one of those obstacles. And then the third step of this process is to systematize it. So make this part of your weekly plan of your monthly and quarterly. And, and obviously right now we're working on the yearly plan, right? The obstacles, uncovering and anticipating obstacles isn't a one-time thing. It is a thing that you want to be doing as a business owner in a repeatable, you know, just part of your natural course of doing business. Okay, so now that you understand why having obstacles is healthy and the process to plan and overcome obstacles, let me give you three very specific examples that may resonate for you in your business. So the first one is you might, one of the obstacles that you might uncover as you're doing this this uh, process is the thought, I don't have control over who buys my services. You might have, that might be an obstacle. You've set, let's just say you've had, for ease of math, you've set a 500K uh, goal for this year from a revenue perspective. And one of the obstacles that you uh, uncover is that you don't, you think you don't have control over who buys your services. So you don't have control over creating that 500K ultimately. That might be an obstacle that you uh, that you realize you're thinking um, as part of your business and uh, concern over hitting your goals. And so write that down. A worry that I don't have control over who buys my services and therefore I don't have control really over hitting the, whether I hit the 500K or not. I know I can... I can go for it, but I don't really feel like I have control. That might be one of your obstacles. So notice that, and then you'll create the plan to overcome that obstacle. The uh, Some examples of what that plan might look like are ask yourself and answer the question, what do I have control over? That question Answering that question gives you so many, I will give you so many ideas about what is it that you can do on a daily and weekly basis, a monthly basis to make the result that you want inevitable. You might not have control over whether client A or client B signs a con, you know, uh, engages with you, but you certainly have control from a macro perspective of so many different aspects of your business. And so asking yourself and answering that question, one of the one of the ways to overcome this obstacle is to ask and answer what do I what do I have control over? Another plan part of the plan that you might create to overcome that obstacle is create a hypothesis and test it for like how many 
lead, how many leads do you need in order to create the contracts that add up to the 500K? Another question that you might ask yourself and answer, again, you don't need to do this as part of the plan. This is you just note, noting that I've got to, these are the things that I've got to tackle in order to overcome this obstacle that I feel like I have in my business, which is I don't have control over who buys my services. So the question that you might note for yourself that you need to ask and answer are what are the two to three improvements I can make to my sales cycle to increase my close rate? so that you have more control over who's buying your services. You have more control over hitting that 500K number, for example. <clears throat> so that's the first example of, un of uncovering an obstacle. I don't have control over who buys my services, feels like an obstacle. And then creating sp very specific plans that you'll implement or address in order to overcome that obstacle. The second example of a potential obstacle you might think is in place for your business, I I can't hit my revenue goal at my current pricing. That might feel like an obstacle to you, or it might be an obstacle. You might not be able to hit a 500K goal, as an example, at your current pricing. So making note of that obstacle and then think about what is my plan to overcome that obstacle? Okay, first I could evaluate my service offerings what could I do to shift my service offerings to make um, their, them more valuable so that then I could hit my adjust the pricing and ultimately hit my revenue goal? Or potentially, I could, uh, when I evaluate my service offerings, I could think about the way that I'm, uh, uh, you know, delivering my offerings and then. Uh, uh, set myself up to deliver more than one at a time could be another way to hit your revenue goal. So you can see here the the plan to overcome the obstacle is uh, first I need I want to evaluate my service offerings. Next, I might want to create a plan to increase my prices in Q1. That might not be another strategy for you uh, to overcome the obstacle of feel of of feeling like your revenue goal and your pricing aren't in aren't in alignment right now you another strategy that you might uh define in order to overcome the obstacle is to improve your sales process so that you can better understand the value of what you do in your clients eyes in order to sell higher um higher priced engagements you might, another strategy that you might uh, list out here in order to overcome that obstacle of feeling like you can't hit your revenue goal at your current pricing. Another way to overcome that obstacle might be asking and answering the question, why is what I do worth 2X or even 10X what I'm currently charging? Another item that you might uh, define as part of the plan to overcome that obstacle is that you need to sell yourself first on new pricing before you start selling it to, to your clients or in parallel to you selling it to your clients. So those are some examples of creating a well-rounded plan to overcome that obstacle, that example of I can't hit my current my revenue goal at my current pricing. And then the third example that I'll share with you today is another um, op common obstacle for independent consultants. So many that, you know, that come to me to work with me from a coaching perspective, they tell me I can't hit my time off goals and my revenue goal. I can have one or the other. I could have a really flexible schedule and make less money, or I could make more money, but I'm going to have to work more. And so if that is an obstacle for you right now, make note of it in as part of this process. And then you're going to want to um, make the plan to overcome that obstacle. So some examples of what you might plan to overcome the obstacle are these four things. Uh, experiment, you might decide I need to experiment with different types of offerings like retainers or advisory, or I need to increase my pricing in order to hit both my time off goals and my revenue goals. Or you might need to, and, and or you might need to address your people pleasing and boundaries when you do have time off. You might already have set yourself up to work 
on client delivery for four, you know, four of four days a week. But you're you're letting client requests and client emails and clients last minute uh, deliverables eat into that time off. And the, the fourth of the of the examples here to as as part of your plan to overcome that obstacle might be a, that you need to adjust your service offerings to better benefit your clients and sat and satisfy your schedule goals. So those are some examples of what a plan might look like to overcome the obstacle that you have in place right now, which is which could be that you can't hit both your time off goals and your revenue goals. You don't have to choose. But what you do need to do is see that that is a current obstacle for you and then plan plan accordingly. Put these plans in place so that you're anticipating the obstacles and then you're con- you know constantly thinking about how do I need to fold in these potential obstacles into you know my plans my the plans that we created last week the plans for the year the plans for the quarter the cl- plans for the month the plans for the week the plans for the day so those hopefully give you some really good examples that you can relate to of what the what potential obstacles could be for you and your business and then what a plan would look like for each one of those to overcome each one of those So the last thing that you'll want to do as part of this process is once you've got all of those strategies defined, how you're going to tackle each of the obstacles, then you'll fold all of those back into your overall action plan, which is what we created from last week's episode. I think it's number 94. So I'll put that, the links to the, to all of these episodes that are related to planning for business success in the show notes as well. So the last thing I'll wrap up with here today is let there are three next steps for you to put this into action. Today's topic into action. The first is to go add, you know, do this work, figure out all of your obstacles, then define all of the strategies that you can implement in order to overcome the obstacles. And then finally go put those strategies, fold all of those back into your action plan so that your action plan is really well-rounded and anticipates all of the realities of your business. And then don't forget, go grab that workbook that I shared with you, the yearly planning process for independent consultants. It's at melissalieberman.com forward slash plan. And then finally, uh, be sure to book your goal review call with me. It's at icgoals with an S dot review. All right. And I will see you again next week for the fifth and final step of our process to plan for business success in 2023 or whatever year you're listening to this in for the next 12 months. We'll say it that way. All right. Thanks for tuning in today and I will see you again next week. Take care.